And we are live, you guys. Welcome, welcome. This is week five of our community building cohort. I'm Taylor. I'm here with the amazing Heather Cooper and the wonderful Asher Oliver here. We're going to talk about AI today. I mean, really, this week has been all about AI, the different tools, um, stuff that we can do with it. We're going to be doing a Twitter spaces tomorrow talking about how AI is driving community. Um, today's chat is is kind of we've got a presentation prepared for you is really featured around, you know, Heather and Asher sharing some of the tips for creators who are wanting to get into AI and making you know, AI tools, helping their workflow, making their content more efficient, kind of for the first time, if you're not really familiar with it, or maybe you've dabbled with it just a little bit, but aren't really sure kind of like what tools do what, what you need to know, this is the presentation for you. So there's a lot of good stuff that we're going to unpack. And again, this is high level. We do go into some more advanced stuff on Fridays with Heather has a, a, a weekly Twitter space on Fridays, um, where we kind of dig deeper into the world of AI and get into those technical conversations. Conversations. But for today, we're going to keep it light and high level. There will be some um, opportunities to ask some questions at the end. So feel free to use the chat box that's um, you know, here where, where you're watching this right now, and we'll do our best to answer those as we go. Um, but I'm really just going to be helping facilitate this thing, and I'm excited to jump into it. Again, this is week five of this 12-week community building cohort. So we've got seven remaining weeks. This week's all focused around AI. And speaking of AI, we have a, an exciting theme for our next AI group challenge that's going to become an NFT collection. Um, so that will be announced. I think we'll tease it out tomorrow, and then we'll announce that on the Twitter spaces officially on, um, well, really tomorrow. <laughs> that's what it is. And then we'll talk about it more on Friday within our Discord chat. So without further ado, um, I will... Let's see, next slide. I will introduce and let you guys really introduce yourselves as well. But we're here with Asher Oliver and Heather Cooper. Um, so if you guys want to want to kick it off and tell us just quickly a little bit about yourself, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, I guess I'll start, man, um, from left to right. Um, so yeah, uh, Asher Oliver started out as a waiter and then got myself into animation and the creative industry uh, by working with Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, so by using social media to kind of promote myself and get my name out there, uh, Gary V tweeted about offering value in exchange for exposure. So my method to get myself an opportunity with him was to offer my cartoons for free because I thought no one was really doing it at that time. That guy wasn't really making cartoons. So I thought there's an opportunity. So I took that opportunity and he, um, he, he bit the bait, I like to say, and I made a cartoon for him, uh, which was seen by John, uh, the CEO of Food Fight Studios. Um, and ever since then, we've been making different animations for different companies, podcasts, uh, animations, music videos, documentary type animations, um, a live event with Wyclef Jean that was in lockdown. Um, we've been doing a lot of really crazy stuff. Now we're delving into the world of artificial intelligence. So a lot of exciting things happening, man, with social media, like possibilities are endless, man. Absolutely. And what about you, Heather? Hi, I'm Heather Cooper, and I am a pharmacist, but I recently became a digital writer last year. So I've been doing this for about a year, writing on Medium and on Twitter since about August. So I'm new to this, and I don't have any, any artistic background. Um, I was more into the technical stuff uh, from coding and developing, but I love visual content, and that's my jam. So with AI art, really, uh, it got I got interested in that, and I think it adds so much because I like visual storytelling and just you know, it's visuals are so much more effective than text. So the way we can tell that story, I wanted to figure out ways to teach creators how to make content that allows everybody to be able to enjoy it. It's inclusive, and it's easy to fun to make. It, it really is, and there's so many tools that are out there. I wasn't as heavily into AI until recently with ChatGPT, but the potential for that and then these other, other the prompts are similar. It's all kind of in the same boat. And just the a lot of editing tools, a lot of things that we are dealing with all the time are also AI. So uh, it's a natural fit and I love it every day. It's like something new. There's never, I'm never bored. I always have content to write about. And I just want to share some of the things I've learned with you guys. 
Awesome. Well, I think that, that between the two of you, you guys are really the perfect um, uh, partners here to help explain some of this stuff because starting out with just the basics you know you talked about accessibility and making it inclusive is important to um, what you do so when we talk about AI and both of you feel free to chime in like what exactly is it especially when we talk about AI for like content creators or entrepreneurs or small businesses well, I think that it, it involves a lot of things, not just the visual and not just, you know, generating text. I mean, it does, a, we, hit, we use it for so many different things and we don't really think about it, just spell check everything, you know, Siri, those kind of things. But for creators, we can take advantage of these tools because we can scale up our production where it might have taken you a much longer time to create something you can basically learn how to enter text and describe what you want and you've got a video or you have an image or you have that. It's a little more intensive than that, but still the amount of time that you would need, say you were gonna create something in Canva, that was where a lot of people were doing it. Now you can just add all these things in much easier and it makes your content, it's more likely, it's better SEO uh, compliant, it's more, or not SEO compliant, but optimized. It's better, um, gets more attention. It just increases your visibility overall. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a co-pilot, man. Um, you know, in all aspects of business, if you need emails writing or you need email sorting, um, those like long mundane tasks that we don't enjoy, it kind of, it's, it's like a little shortcut. Um, you need an Instagram post right now and you're just like completely brain fried, as John likes to say. Um, it kind of gives you a starting point and a guide and a bit of inspiration. Um, and also like the, the visual aspect, like a lot of people really want to do creative stuff and create stories, but don't really have a starting point and have the know-how or have the time to learn the know-how for these like really like sophisticated tools that have a huge learning curve. So AI kind of skips the line, so to speak, um, and helps you kind of get ahead in that sense. I need to quickly go and attend to my door. I'll be right back as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Ash. Oh, we understand um, that. Yeah, yes, we and that's do. a good We're point too the about the, uh, the learning time is cut down where you have so much information available, especially with chat GPT and things that are coming off of that. You can, there's really no limit to what you can learn and what you can end up creating, whether it's through text or your um, overall strategy for planning, your um, outlining your topics, researching and things like that on top of generating that stuff and getting it out there and having it write it in copywriting mm -hmm. format. Just so, so many little things. So Heather, like we talk a lot about, you know, the gr kind of the groupings of different types of AI, right? Like there's sort of the image generative, generative images. Um, and then there's sort of like the text side of things like the chat GPT or different language learning models. Um, so what, like if, if we kind of group it between those two things, I mean, we have it here on the slide, but like, what are some of the things um, just in your months on Twitter, seeing it all firsthand that you're seeing creators do with AI? Well, I'm seeing that from everything from just generating those ideas and planning how you're going to structure it and how you're going to present it, lay it out, what's most effective, what looks best. Um, I've been seeing it in, you would see, you know, occasional images on tweets, for instance, or on the, in a hook, but now you're seeing it almost everywhere. But even Twitter says, I think you're like five times more likely to get uh, people to go ahead and click on that tweet um, if it's in their timeline with a visual. And if it's a moving animated one, that's even more. It's just going to increase it so much faster. So I've been seeing it more and more with not just ads, but also add tweets, threads, uh, uh, medium, uh, for instance, blog articles, everybody, well, I haven't used Canva to create something, you know, just for that, because why, if you can create that kind of thing, you can create visuals within your document or within your t um, articles. Um, there's this, that names, company names or uh, product names and product display, things like that, um, you know, adding all those things in to your content, it just adds another level to it and it makes um, the audience more engaged. I've seen I'm loads like, of people. Sorry, sorry no, to cut you. 
Go, go ahead. Saying, I've, I've seen loads of people create um, logos with image generation, which is something I never really thought of. Like it's always been, you know, uh, assets for animations and images and stuff like that. But I never thought about using it for like a, a, a brand company logo. Like it's just one of the use cases. There are so many use cases. I'm not sure if you guys have covered that in my uh, no, we didn't. absence. But uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of um, people do that on social media. And I, I assume people can make businesses from that as well. Like just have like a massive stock of different logos that you could sell to uh, individuals and entrepreneurs. And if not, okay. someone needs to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, as a designer, I... I use like almost exclusively now I'll use mid journey or other like generative image tools just to help develop my mood boards, like my design, you know, look and feel as I'm starting to piece together different assets as part of like the creative exploration phase of, you know, if I'm designing a new UX or UI or, um, you know, some sort of app or like experience, like I will go to <laughs> mid journey before I even will go to like dribble or, um, you know, the all awards or even Pinterest in that case, um, just because I can kind of visualize in text to image what it is that I'm looking to create. And then that helps me contextualize the creative that comes behind it. Then I, from that point, then I'll take it over into like a web search and start to like go down that funnel. But um, I wanted to touch on too some of the other things that you can do with text generation, like chat GPT that are, I think known, but maybe like lesser known. Cause obviously there's the stuff like social media copy, you know, right. You're helping to write your captions. You, you mentioned Heather, like the SEO, the, the blog posts, um, you know, email campaigns, like your email newsletters, you can help to use it with that, but also the coding and the scripting part of it. Um, ha have you played around with that or do you, have you seen like good use cases of people actually using chat GPT to help with like scripting, for example? Well, for scripting, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and when you say coding too, it helps if you're not familiar, it can go ahead and tell you what you want, what code you need to enter in a no code or a low code site so that you don't need to get, you know, you don't have to be a developer in order to use all these different um, sites. You can just throw up a landing page or whatever um, very quickly and connect, you can ask it, how do I pull my information from Airtable or from my Google Sheets or whatever and import that type of thing. So that is very, very helpful. And, um, and you can ask it to explain it to you in layman's terms because you're not a developer or tell me like I'm five. But for the scripting, I, I've been using it recently because I was doing participating in that 365 days of AI. And every day there would be, there's a new um, topic. And I think for the genie the other day, I put into chat GPT, tell me in 280 characters or less, write something about a genie and like the image that I generated, write a story, a backstory for it because I saw other people doing that and it comes out with a nice little, you know, um, you can take that and say, hmm, well, give me three more examples. And then you can pick and choose from those. And sometimes I, I'll i take parts of one and rewrite it. I don't normally use it as you know, the way it spits it out, but it gives you a lot of yeah. ideas. Um, hooks, you know, uh, telling it your CTAs, it's really good at that. And SEO titles and descriptions captions for um different uh you know uh social media posts and instagram or whatever um so there's a lot of little things like that even legal paper like if you're doing something for your um sops or for legal documentation that you would have to put certain things you know um warnings on the what do you call it on the bottom of the page it can come up with that for you too so there's all these little uh, extra things, book book jackets. I had it print me product descriptions. If you wanted to put something on Amazon, it can give you a product description and you could put in the actual item number. And if it's something that it's familiar with, um, but you, it's not just chat GPT, you can also use Playground through OpenAI and that's current. That's not limited to 2021. And other, you know, different Jasper chat and different things like that, you.com. Yeah, I haven't tried Bing uh, that yet, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of little things like that too. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely say to anybody using these type of chatbots and stuff like that to get content from it, written content, I definitely say sieve through it because <laughs> you're talking about the stories. And the reason I laughed and smiled was because it's funny how ChatGPT kind of has the same kind of um, framework sometimes if you let it take the reins. It's like, yeah. you know, once upon a time there was, or in a little land far away or whatever. And it's just so like, <laughs> <laughs> typical of like a children's type story and it's like that's not the tonality i want so you know it gives you a a, a starting point but always go through and add your own spin on it for sure i was and and fact check too <laughs> like, oh, yeah. oh yeah 100%. always fact check because yeah. i think that that's something like in, even now you see like a lot of people on twitter linkedin they're like you know if you're not making money in your sleep using ai tools you're doing it wrong and it's like Sure, there's you, you, <coughs> you could literally take, uh, you know, the exact output and probably publish it somewhere and get some views on it. Um, but it's not going to be truly like the human first context needed. It will be mm -hmm. deprioritized by search rankings as well, um, yep. you know, like on Google. And then not only that, but like it not it not, doesn't and maybe one of you can fact check me on this i don't think it directly plagiarizes but there have been instances of it using literally the exact same context um case in point i was i was writing something on chat gpt over the weekend and i was like i wonder if i google this like what the google response will say and it was almost identical to what chat gpt had said like same structure because it was like oh, how snap. do i do this so i was like okay well so you know clearly there is some um parallels with the content that it's lifting from different sources and places it's a trained model um but definitely it, it's a it's a takeaway there is like make sure you fact check you know add your mm -hmm. own flair and grammar and too the grammar. Yes. Spelling. well grammar i don't know what's what the deal is with that but I, there's very few times when I've actually just used it word for word. I don't know if I've ever done that. I almost always switch. And then you could take some things off and sometimes it's a little bit too excited. And, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, like, out, some man. of the like, yes, have fun, let's go. You know, <laughs> um, so you could do that. And then always just keep t uh, testing it because it remembers the com it's, it's the same conversation. Say, give me three more, do it, uh, rewrite it this many in this tone, write it as if I'm 15 years old, write it if I'm mm -hmm. five, write it if I'm a professional or if I'm a medical professional, whatever. So you can keep testing it and then um, you might have to like kind of redirect it again if it starts getting a little goofy, like for t tweets, I'll say 280 characters or less, it'll give me 295. So you got to uh, take it down to give me 250 characters or less if that's what we're playing today. So it can kind of give you a starting point and simplify. I like the simplification. Um, mm -hmm. I always have trouble simplifying what I'm writing and being concise. And it can really, if you take what you have, put it in there and see what it does with it. Mm -hmm. That kind of helps too. Yeah, using ChatGPT almost like as an assistant in some way. Yeah. Like, you know, here's like <laughs> five paragraphs of text summarize the three key points yeah. for me and it'll do it and that's a great way to use it um heather i know that you are like the tool master we go to you when we need help with like tools what what tools uh -huh. to use so i know right I love you. Uh, so talk to us about these these like kind of common ai tools obviously the list goes on and on you're literally always reporting and talking about all of these different tools and new products <laughs> flooding the market but these are kind of some of the ones distilled down into the categories of like image animation voice and then text so wondering if you could like do a quick dive down some of these well the image generators you know is mid journey and everything else basically Mid Journey is its own creature and it, it has its own style. It's unique. It, it's, it's easier for beginners. Honest, honestly, once if you're comfortable in Discord, it, you don't have to do as much with your prompts. So you can do, you can just use emojis. You can use one word. Um, you can use just a, a poem and it will give you a pretty interesting uh, result. And it, it really can take it and go pretty far with it. Then you have uh, Lexica before Leonardo came around, but Lexica has been there because they, the Lexica is great because they have the lot, they have so many all stable diffusion, but they have so many images to get ideas from. So when I first started doing any AI art, I would go to uh, Lexica and you can copy the prompt or just type in, I want balloons and you can look up different styles and see how would you craft that prompt. So that's how I, before I even, I didn't even realize Lexica had a generator for like a month or two. 
but you can generate stuff with Lexica. I think you get a hundred free generations before you have to uh, pay a subscription. So, but it's really, really nice. And so I use that Leonardo, uh, well, Dolly, I don't use it as much. Um, I very rarely use it. I don't really like a lot of the images, but then I'm Dolly was one of the really early ones too. I right. think if I remember, like that was the one that we were all so hyped for, like, more than and a it year was amazing ago. and it was it, it was but it wasn't even really that was not even that many that long ago i think that was like um what mm. september or something mm -hmm. in september october yeah. and the, the way that they've advanced since then from you know giving you like some kind of monstrous looking humans to people looking like supermodels you know um and lexica also they have the aperture model where it can create some really photorealistic uh shots so Leonardo is new on the scene and they are basically a full service. Everything is going on there where you can generate, you can look for ideas. It even has a prompt, the prompt generator. It can help give you a prompt. It can do prompt magic, you know, to clean it up and give you different ideas and also upscaling, background removal and all that kind of stuff, image to image. So Leonardo is pretty much a full service in the models, all the different models you can use. I like those types of uh, Leonardo and um, Playground and some of those where you can use multiple models. You're not going to just have, or the Playground AI, not Open AI Playground. Playground, the platform for um, images. And that's also, I think it's a ridiculous amount you get free per day. So it's basically free. And you can do a lot of um, editing and different things like that on there too but you can use stable diffusion or you can use one of their other uh, models and different filters on there too. So there's different like preset night cafe is another one I forgot to mm -hmm. add. Yeah. So for all those, then the animation that's been, you know, um, making strides, Kyber and Genmo are pretty much the main ones that you can use for it. The animation, not full videos, but, it's going to animate that still image and um, they have different preset um, model preset styles in there for Kyber and Genmo. It kind of does its own, but then it has other features too. Leopix converter is interesting because it's the 3D. It adds the motion, 3D motion. So it takes it from 2D to 3D. So it's limited in what it, it can't, it's not going to fully animate it, but you can um, do some different things with that. Um, and that's really cool. The voice of uh, apps are just amazing. Um, Eleven Labs, Voice AI, uh, I think I think DID too, I think you can generate. There's a bunch of different things where you can generate voices and then download that. And um, you can generate in different styles or accents or whatever. And then you can, you know, download that particular file and use it in something else. Or yeah. there's also different tools where you can change your own voice. So it could be text to voice or it could be voice. It'll just, you know, change your voice into something else where I think they said for certain things online, you might want, not want people to know, like, say, a female is in a place where whatever they want to seem like they're a male. Uh, mm -hmm. from whatever type of community they're on. So there's a lot of things like that. So you can I mean our boy that. our boy Amar just in a just gonna say it. you beat me to there it. You. Yeah. There you go. You you tell yeah. it. You tell no, it. No, 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 you, you go for it. We're on the same wavelength. Well, he, I love it. You go, you go. <laughs> he just released um on President's Day here in the US That's last right. was it last week. He did a, a really cool piece on um just like a social piece. I think he put it up on Twitter, maybe a couple other platforms, but used uh, like Ronald Reagan's voice, basically trained this like AI model. I forget which tool he used. So we'll have to- It, was, it, was, it was definitely 11 labs that he used for that. It was? It was okay. A, yeah. It sounds super familiar for that. I haven't used either of those. Um, but he trained it using, I guess, 11 labs and was able to use also chat GPT in tandem with that to develop a script of what would sound like President Ronald Reagan would say and then um it was phenomenal like it yeah. was just insane how realistic it sounds um mm -hmm. so with anyways. those with, with, the, with those types of um the types of apps you need to like feed it at least 20 minutes to like 60 minutes worth of, of voices of said subject of said person you're trying to mimic so we can fully train and understand what it's supposed to try and spit back out at you so I think he uploaded, I think maybe like five 
separate maybe i got that wrong maybe like five actually 10 minutes maybe less than what i just said and then it came out really well so yeah it's definitely yeah, a tool worth awesome. i'm sure some dangerous things could be done with it but oh, I, um yeah <laughs> very creative amazing things as well like i can i can see use cases for creators who like need to put together like a sales video for a product mm -hmm. and they like you know maybe don't have the voice for it or they you know they're conscious about their accent or something like that you can tr literally train an ai model to um replicate a certain voice like intonation for you so english isn't That's their the first language exactly and yeah helps. there you go yeah, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. And then what about text and like scripting tools? I know I have playground down here, but there's, there's two playgrounds, right? What playground, there's a playground AI that is the image uh, mm -hmm. generation and, and um, they're not the, the same as open AI that make that chat GPTs through open AI. Open AI has its own playground. So that's the one that's under the text and scripts there. And okay. then um, the chat GPT is its own and that's through OpenAI. And then there's other GPT-3, um, which is what ChatGPT is, that are like Jasper Chat, Easy Peasy. Um, I think GoCharlie has one too, where there's a, a bunch of different assembly AI. That's not that's not actually ChatGPT, it's, but it's a GPT-3 or GPT-4, whatever we're getting to at this point. So those are really helpful for a lot of different things. And then there's even the quicker ones where perplexity, you can um, you know, generate, look up something and generate there. That um, rephraser, I think I did one, I did something on that where it'll just rephrase up to um, maybe like 200 characters or something like that. So it was perfect. I was able to repurpose a thread where I um, was including things. So I just put my text from tweets into there and had it like rephrase it. And that's a quick way to kind of repurpose so it's not repetitive. So there's a lot of things, but I'll, speaking of Amar, it reminded me about the books and we were saying different things you can make, different types of content that you can create with these uh, tools and you could have digital products, in, including a book, you know, and have a book in uh, selling it on Amazon pretty quickly. So, mm -hmm. or any type of, um, you know, you could do tutorials. Um, you could do little quick demos, your courses, you could have your online, you know, there's the slide presentation ones that uh, Tome and all those different ones, it's text to video, text to slides or text to presentation. Um, and for image, like for uh, the one that it uh, creates the slides for Instagram or it'll create the tweets. There's a couple that are pretty good at the predicting what your tweet will sound like. I think Tweet Hunter has one tweet that Hunter, is free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one. And I put my own username in there and it gave me some pretty accurate stuff, just like mine. It looked oh, okay. like I, so you, I, I, you could use it for your own. And see. I never knew that. I literally thought uh -huh. you just had to try and target someone that you want to talk in the tone you voice put in of. Any, any username and it'll pull up because I did it on like 10 different people. And several oh, of us it sounded, it was very close. I said it basically like my mindset uh, tweets. It was like, oh, okay, I might use that one tomorrow. <laughs> but, wow. So it, it, you can use it for that too. So it helps to speed you up for that also. Nice. So, so yeah. all of which is to say like the, the, the journey of AI, like the expansiveness of AI and the different types of tools, like we're only scratching the surface of it right yes. now. You know, these are mm -hmm. some of the like kind of groupings you have, like your image generators, your animation, the voice stuff, the text stuff. But um, beyond that, like what you just mentioned, Heather, there's also the, you know, presentations. There's like, there's probably going to be AI just for automating your your social media workflows at, at some point in time, like that literally writes it, publishes it, times it at the right time, follows the right people. Um, I don't think it exists yet, but maybe new well, product you know, idea. But also, too, like for your um, audio, for the spaces, I use mm -hmm. Flowgen is another one that I can download. Love my Flowgen. Audio, and now they have where you it'll create videos, shorts for you out of your um, audio. Amazing. So there's several pictory and uh, different ones that do that also um, so that you can, you don't even have to have the uh, video. You can insert your mm -hmm. own or the images or it'll make them for you. And um, summarizing, remember, <laughs> summarizing your stuff and taking yes. a long uh, a podcast, audio, whatever, 
and you can go ahead and repurpose that into multiple different things, mm -hmm. but at least just get the, you can break it up into different things. And have, when you have a summarizing and um, the quote generation too, you could just do a quick uh, clip for something so that's awesome yeah, dang heather we need I mean, we need just a full session just on tools because i know well, there's like, like they just there's so many and there's so much. many that are releasing that's every day yeah it's hard to I, I forgot half the ones i was supposed to be working on <laughs> it's like yeah. oh i forgot all about that one. Awesome. But, yeah well let's let's talk about some of the like strategies and tactics you know, that creators, entrepreneurs, business owners, founders can like get started with right away, which is one of the main questions that I always have when I start out with anything is like, where am I looking for inspiration for some of this thing? Like, I know how the tool works, sort of. I know what to do with it. I know what type of content it can produce. But what is it that I want to create? Like, can you guys share some insights around how you find your inspiration for content well, with AI? Well, definitely. Definitely with my journey, um, obviously it's on Discord and the Discord community is absolutely amazing on there. You've got different like yes. different tabs. There's tabs for general stuff. Um, there's tabs for newbies that have just come so they can kind of like get to get to grips with the way you construct prompts to create images. They've got like um, themes of the day, environments, characters, that kind of thing. And you can inbox anybody or comment on a post and everyone's just so okay with talking to you and mm -hmm. letting you know how you should um create a prompt or any kind of help you need or they have to say yo copy and paste the prompt that you just commented on like to create something from this you know like this is all open source like you know we're all one family which is great and obviously instagram there's so many different mid journey underscore slash forward backspace um insert name here type uh um profiles coming up right now so you can see this really beautiful picturesque there's this one called i think it's retro something retro wave or something like that and it creates these most beautiful neon like light blue pink purple looking beautiful back in the day type aesthetics and it's absolutely amazing i i love yeah. back in the day retro throwbacks i love that stuff meshed with modern i love that stuff so yeah it's, it's all over social media and obviously they've got a uh, community um website as well mid-journey so uh yeah that's crazy because I, I never go to, to the channels in Midjourney. I always forget that they have all those discussions and they mm -hmm. even have office hours now um, where they're, you know, giving out you know, a lot of information. And I always I'm in the private room and I forget about that. But yeah. I use when I go on the Midjourney, I like to go to the community gallery and that's I'll start there first. And that's where I get the majority of my ideas. Because that gallery I, is insane. When you said mm -hmm. the theme of the day, now I understand. That's why some days it's all, you know, carnival glass. Because I'm like, what's up with carnival glass today? And every you'll see five million different things. So I like to look through there and see what kind of stuff. And almost every day, it's something a little bit different. And everybody just starts trying to, you know, do their own. It was Malachite the other day. Mm -hmm. um, just um, really cool stuff. The cat jitsu or something with that. I mean, there was this crazy stuff like that, but it's so creative and you can see people are generating it like right mm -hmm. then. And you can copy, I copy those uh, prompts down and then I kind of just tinker with them until I can get what I want, change the subject, mm -hmm. or maybe I'll mix two together because you get more ideas um, from that. But also like there, all these platforms, um, Lexica, any of them really and for most of these tools playground they all have um galleries so even for kyber genmo those things you can look at them and get ideas where you may have no idea at all where to even begin but just mm. kind of look and see what catches your eye and don't be it it's not copying if you're just you can every time you use it it's going to generate something differently yeah. and um it's going to be go. unique and uh Asher is right where people it's so much fun to come up with these ideas and sharing information. It's not like people are trying to hoard that information. They want to mm -hmm. share what they learn and see what do you come up with and see what else, how their their ideas can evolve. So mm -hmm. that YouTube, um, if you just kind of like glance around on YouTube, there's a lot of different things, too, where you might not have realized there was the capability of this particular thing or you watch Matt Wolf in his videos, and I'm like, I that's how Matt I learned Wolf about several guy. ways. Yeah, and it's or it's even guy. like um, what's it, Olivier um, that he has a a lot of different um, 
the art ones he does. He's a, I think he's a photographer, Olivier. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't remember. Is it but, yeah, Sarkis? Sarkis yeah, something like yes. that. Yeah. Like yes. That, yeah. He's great. And he'll sometimes mm -hmm. just have a show where it's just the tr top trends where I've gotten several ideas from that too, like the bioluminescent yeah. flowers and things like that. So he'll just give you, and then he, he also goes into how to identify keywords in the prompts. And that's how you start kind of just noticing like, well, if you change this, it'll, it'll give this effect. Or if you want to try this type of depth of field or something like that. So that's I like so those. Cool. I love, yeah. I love mid journeys, like community gallery on the, on the site. Cause you can go through and if you're logged in with your, you know, your discord login, you can actually see everything that you've generated ever. So you mm -hmm. can go back through your, all of your old, like, you know, prompts and like upscales and things like that and see everything that you've done. You can like tag it a certain way if you want. Um, but then you can also like, you, you can search for terms, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Cause if you're like, I want to find a character or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, or if you have a kind of a broad idea, but the best part is for me is that you can literally copy the prompt. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. somebody will do this like magical masterpiece. And I'm like, how do they do that? I mean, I think that's probably one of the first questions that most people uh, ask when they see any, any type of really cool AI generated art is like, what prompt did you use? So mm -hmm. if you're on that like mid journey gallery, you can just like, copy it it's open source you can grab it you can tweak it you can do you can you go into the it. open it in discord too so that you yes. go straight to that you don't have to find it in your um, mess um mm -hmm. you know it'll go straight to that particular uh generation i think you can do that with other ones too mm -hmm. and it'll show you the related uh, images the mm -hmm. things that are related to that too from the community that's so do you know cool. what I love about this whole mid-journey stuff and the AI? I'm sorry to go off on a tangent, but you guys have kind of sparked this thought in my head. I just <laughs> love us. this whole, I love the kind of world and culture that this whole AI art has kind of created now. You know, it's mm -hmm. just like this, this, this kind of world of like sharing and borrowing and using to create your own type stuff and things like that. I don't know about you guys, but there's, I, I think there's so much like beauty and magic not to sound mm -hmm. corny, but there's so much beauty and magic in not knowing specifically what image you're going to get. Yeah. You know? I mean, I know some yeah. artists do like having control and like, you know, I want a tool that can kind of, I can paint and the image is right there where I want it. I want it exactly how I want it. But I just love the whole roulette feel of this stuff, man. Like you mm -hmm. never no, know what you're going to get. And sometimes what you think you want isn't the answer. Yes. Something else might pop up and sparks another piece of creativity in your head that takes you down a journey that you didn't even th think, think about or even consider. Yes. So I, I I just love this stuff, man. Love oh my it. God, you are you're my head, Asher, because that's like literally what we're talking about. You know, as part yeah. of this cohort, we're all about like community and community building and finding the tactics and strategies. This week being, you know, all about AI and tomorrow's Twitter space is literally about like what you just said. Is we are these AI tools and just like the very nature of them, the fact that they're open source, the fact that it they require or you know sort of enable collaboration it's mm -hmm. just like it's a natural community builder it makes people come together inherently just because there's so much knowledge that's forming and i think that's such a cool aspect of these tools um that that make people want to ask questions and share their answers because everyone is kind of figuring it out right now as well and like there's so many little quirks and and tips and things that you know you know just by doing it and by talking to other people who are doing it so just wanted it to also it inspires too like you you may come up with an idea for a tool like I didn't think that I would be making a product but if once you start you get ideas yourself like you know what maybe I can make a generator for this or something that mm. would come up with that or how would I know what size to make this image or um, upscaling whatever um, there's just so many little things how could you find the prompts um, that you want with an image and you you may end up being a, having your own startup and your own product um, like Dreambox. I think that's what they were Drayson and Carbon were saying. They are neither one of them are developers, I don't think. And they just said they saw an idea. You know what? Let's make this stuff into real products. And boom, they've got something where if you dream it, we box it. And I'm like, that is so cool. And Love all that. of these different open source um, creators that are coming, like even on Fridays and just that we're seeing just pop up. It's it's so organic and so wild because it stimulate it stimulates your creativity almost. It's like I feel I'm more creative as I'm looking at this stuff. You're not copying it. 
you just keep getting more ideas branching off of each thing you do. And that's, I've never experienced anything like that, especially where there's so many people that are interested in the same common thing where it's just, it's wild. And I think a lot of people don't realize that when they're looking from the outside in, how much fun it is and how much collaboration there really is. And everybody's just trying to find some place where we can gather to like for the community where it's like, oh, you like, okay, I didn't know you like, AI, you know, it's AI art, or I didn't know you did this. And then it's, we're finding more connections with people that than we would have spread apart before. I love that. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk. Cause I know we're, we've got some examples too, oh, yeah. to show. So like, before we get into some of the examples and sort of like the workflows and processes that you guys have gone through, what are your tips? I'm sure both of you have them, uh, you know, tips, guidelines, uh, anything under the sun of like creating high quality AI outputs for either generative images or for text. A very interesting one. Think like a robot, but with these AI tools, <laughs> I we got need that to one from you. To, yeah, we need to learn how to talk to these robots, man. This is one thing that, um, for because I know I was talking about Russian roulette with this whole creative um, aspect of this stuff, but like sometimes when you do want something specific from Mid Journey, you know, you need to know how to speak to it and able to get what you want from out of it. So I'd be very interested to hear more stuff on this because this is something I'm still trying to work out myself. So. This is this is definitely something I would take a back seat on and uh, let I'm you guys kind of take with, the, with Rob, the wheels. Um, Lennon and other people too, just kind of testing things out. But yeah, speaking, thinking like a robot. The robots don't use slang necessarily, and they're not going to understand when you put figures of speech together. Or we're you know you have to be direct, but you don't want if you the more details you give it, sometimes it limits the cre creativity of the algorithm and it kind of gears it, it takes the selection down all the way. So if you, yeah. you could speak natural language basically, but not necessarily conversational, where if you want some kind of type of output, and if you say an image that versus imagine this, it's completely different, um, you know, where it, the way it sees something in different keywords that it associates with different things that it's been trained on. So um, that is cool. But I think for when you're deciding, like, I, first thing is definitely know what size you need. What, what are your size dimensions? And for the most part, a lot of these tools, at least figure out if you want landscape, portrait, or just the square, you know, so you can see that before you start generating. If you can select the size, I would do that or the dimension, whether it's, or, you know, land orientation. Um, mm -hmm. then think about that because you don't want to have to change it later. And um, it's some certain images, like for the, if you have more than one image on a tweet, if you have multiple, they're how they're going to display and which one do you want to show? Like, is it something that you want them to be able to, to see the whole thing before they click into that? Or is it going to make them just kind of glance over it? That kind of thing. So they, if you, anything you can do ahead of time to avoid having to try to, change that later, that helps. And then some of the free uh, apps, they don't let you, you can't uh, use the high quality download, high resolution. So it might only limit you in the type of resolution that you can download if you're not a paid subscriber. So some of them, they're fine, but every now and then those are just little things too that I would look at for trying to get the best quality. One thing I've noticed, like, because it says um, mega prompts are not always better. Sometimes I see people in the community and they're posting like a damn dissertation of a prompt and then getting these like really good images. And then you scroll down again and you see someone who's maybe just like typed out two lines worth of a prompt. And it's better than the one I just saw that had the massive mm -hmm. paragraph in. So it, it, it's like mega prompts, like they're not always better. Is, is it like in the details? Does it get confused or... Sometimes it cancels, certain things will cancel the other ones out because you're like, or you're repeating the same thing over and over. A lot of times you'll see they put intricate, highly detailed, ultra detailed, ultra realistic, photo realistic, yeah. um, ultra yeah. realistic, um, that kind of octane render. And this, uh, and sometimes it doesn't hurt. There are so many um, different resources out there to look at different types of photography terms and things because sometimes it just, those things just don't match. You know, you can't have a, 
photorealistic uh, animation or cartoon illustration. And, you know, you can, but it's going to get kind of weird um, after a while in comic style or whatever. So there's a lot of tools out there that can give you an idea, a visual idea of what it will look like. But I think a lot of people, and I, I'm guilty of it myself because I have massive prompts that yeah. don't really make sense when I take, and I, if you pull out a couple words here and there and see like what, which one really matters. And for sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, if you can start out, you don't have to have a super long um, prompt and it doesn't have to, you can just use emojis, you know, for a mid journey. And I've had some fabulous things. It's wild. One or two emojis can produce all kinds of images. <laughs> I've with tried people. that before, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, I don't know how it figures it out. It just comes up with this random things, but yeah. It, the it's almost stuff. sometimes with, with a lot of these tools, image or text, like sometimes the less you give it, the more creative mm -hmm. reign that the mm -hmm. AI has to like create something, you know, creative. But then on the other hand of it, it also means that as a user, as a human user inputting that you have a little bit less control over the outcome, which for some cases is fine. For many cases is fine. For some people who need something very specific, it's not. But in my experience, I've been, you know, on chat GPT like all day, every day since it launched. Um, mm. And mega prompts has been one of these things sort of circling conversations, you know, are they good or are they not, especially when you give it a ton of context um, in the chat box and then it comes back with something totally wacky, like not even in line with what you're mm. asking for. Because to your point, oh, Heather, sometimes it, yeah, it can, the hierarchy of it kind of breaks down a little bit um, and it gives you something totally, you know, off topic. Maybe it cancels itself out in certain ways. And then sometimes the more and more you, you keep the conversation going, it just sort of like loses that initial mm -hmm. context altogether at least in my experience because yeah. i've seen some of these like mega prompt templates out there and i'm like let me try this and see what i get and it just like does not compute the way that mm -hmm. i'm wanting it to um but when you are able to like define what the content is in my experience like defining what what type of content i'm looking for right whether it's is it sales copy is it um and this is under the assumption that i'm using chat gpt for like marketing you know, content, not just as like an, uh, as a virtual assistant, but if I'm using it for like marketing content, like for email campaigns or, um, you know, ad creative copy or a, a Twitter thread or a blog post, like tell chat GPT what type of content it is. So if it's a script, you know, it, that will inform it that you need to have a certain tone of voice. It'll look at mm -hmm. like, you know, YouTuber scripts and things like that. And having a tone of voice is important too, because that really yeah. makes a difference between like just the generic, as you mentioned earlier, Ash, like chat GPT comes back with some of the same ramblings over and over again, <laughs> like the same story structure. And I've found that changing the voice around or the tone or the style of like who's speaking, like explain that to me as though you were Gary Vaynerchuk. It, it kind of takes those pieces and Swears like deconstructs you. it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, just, or tell it to regenerate and the answer. Just I, I did go. that for a long time. I regenerated every single um, answer over and over until I had like a whole bank. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, but yeah, you can or just say, you know, give me another one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, do it. And also like to how you, if you want it in bullet points, tell it to put it yes in a, that's a one of my favorites list. outline it mm -hmm. with a, an example a clear example at least two examples for each section with mm -hmm. a product name and then you could kind of just keep going back and narrowing it and then tell it rewrite all of that all in one you know together mm -hmm. organize yep. it all together and um, yeah. i have that. found that that is the best way for getting the type of content output that i want is just like what you said heather is like feeding it the context over you know, a, a, a series of chats rather than trying mm -hmm. to shove everything you want into one thing and then just hoping for the best. Like instead starting from like, here's what I'm looking for and then sort of massaging the conversation that you're having with mm -hmm. ChatGPT to yeah. give you what you want. And every time you respond, you know, you can manipulate that output a little bit, a little bit more we, and get closer yeah. and closer. Exactly, right. exactly. Exactly. Awesome. I mean, there's a lot we could go there. There are literally like courses and like 90 minute videos on YouTube about this kind of stuff, just how to create these high quality outputs. But I think at the high level, like this is 
this is the stuff, you know, it's, it's putting your subject first. It's talking about what context you want out of it, the type of content. Um, But, you know, there's there's a million ways to do it. Yes. Sorry. I was about to say, sorry, I was about to say, Heather, remember when you, um, because I, I, I created a video based upon you posting about the mid journey prompt helper. And that talks about image, image weights. I think it's colon, colon, um number whatever so mm-hmm. I, I still didn't get the grips of it but obviously you can do the colon colon number after the subject the color the lighting and then depending on yeah. the number that's the amount of influence that it has in the image so you can have an element of control if you that's know exactly how to kind right. of work it yeah that's exactly right and one of my mm-hmm. friends just did a um just seen uh clap she just did a, a definition thread for those terms such as weight and what it means in layman's terms and mm-hmm. how the, the neural networks work with that. <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what it is too. Yeah. I mean, I, I just learned you. about seeds like a couple of weeks ago. I, so I've been I've trying to use this skill in, um, but it's, there's yeah. so many different It's still confusing to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've had no luck with that at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I know that's that's definitely like advanced stuff. But speaking of some of the advanced stuff, like we we do have some use cases that we can go ahead and share as well. So, um, Ash, just tell me tell me if you want me to uh, push on yes. to the next slide. But you take it away. Take <laughs> it away. All right. Yeah. So this um, is an image of a young girl. Um, this is basically. Um, from my poem that I made because I went through a phase where I was just writing loads of poetry I just need like a, a different creative kind of output and this one is about um, basically young girls online and how they are succumbing to the pressures of social media and using filters and because they don't feel beautiful in the outside world but in the social media world because they're getting so many different strangers feeding them compliments over and over again saying you're beautiful with this filter on she's starting to lose herself so I put this image, I got this uh, image from Mid Journey version two. And I don't know if you remember guys, but version two had some really like, I don't know, Tim Burton-esque type, really weird, strange. Yeah. yeah, Some really abstract. I kind of miss that. I kind of think it's too perfect now. You You can use it. You can still use it. To be fair. Yeah, you can, you can. But um, yeah, back then it kind of created this image. Um, I can't remember what the prompt was. I think it was, uh, um, young girl kind of like a puppet kind of thing I wanted to like have an abstract puppet thing but this is what it's about out anyway um, so I wanted to create an animation from it so what I did was took that image and then separated the eyes from the body so I wanted to obviously move the eyes and whatnot so tell if you go to the next slide yeah oh is, is it playing yeah cool All right so this is moho pro this is like the animation software that we use at free yeah. fight studios um, so what I did was I imported the head uh, and the body and the eyes um, on different layers and then create a mesh. So that's what those purple lines are. So you can see it go around her head and her eyebrows and her eyes and through her mouth. So I put those in place. And on that timeline, you can see the animation data. So I'm using that to kind of like animate the eyes, the blinking, the movement, as you can see right there. There's no mouth movement. Um, That's later on in the clip, but I did the mouth movement as well. because yeah so um i didn't actually have the um is, is is the sound coming through i can't hear the sound on my end um no. but i but I, i'll talk about it f- anyway um sorry it's so yes, not working on it <laughs> that's fine so um i rendered it out and then added it into adobe after effects and then threw like this kind of overlay over the top of it so it has that kind of you know sinister kind of feel to it because it is a very hard hitting subject um uh, added some music, added this as well, which was the si- a similar prompt, but she came out with like crazy green hair and almost was like this kind of clown, just to like hone in on that kind of makeup aspect. Like, we're not ourselves, you're not yourself, be yourself type thing. Um, so, since we've got no sound, we don't really need to see, uh, but the, the, the different expressions come through, as you can see, moving the eyebrows and stuff like that. So that's one of the use cases that you could do. Um, obviously there are more sophisticated AI tools that you can maybe animate with and do this stuff with, but since I'm still old school and get to learn those things, this has been kind of my method. Um, so if you go to the next slide, sorry. Um, okay. So yeah, I did this today actually. Um, so I went into mid journey V4, um, took this guy, uh, based on me, if you like, (laughs) and then took the image and threw it into Photoshop. 
and then got rid of the background to create an alpha channel because unfortunately mid journey doesn't yet support alpha channels and i can't wait till it does because it will make this animation process so much better but until then um i haven't got any access to any ai tools that can remove backgrounds yet that i know of so i've been using photoshop and it's quite an easy quick process um magic eraser in photoshop get rid of all the little bits there and then um export that out and then make it into a um a png so yeah and that's the end of that yep we'll go to the next slide sorry okay so that guy was our main character so this is like my back garden if you like where i live a beautiful yorkshire countryside and i put in cyberpunk to like kind of give it that futuresque future risky type look but didn't quite come through but still it had this kind of moody sunset orangey golden color so i think it did quite a good job full moon and everything um so if we go to the next slide sorry so i did the same thing i did with the main character threw that into photoshop and then extracted the parts because i want to create a depth of field so we've got the mid layer on the top left on the top right front layer and then bottom right layer we've got the back layer and then bottom left of course we've got the main character so if we go to the next slide and then so what i'm doing here is I'm creating a depth of field, moving the different layers in order. So when I zoom in, we place our character in as well, sorry. When I zoom in, we'll get this kind of depth of field. So things that are further away will take longer and move slower as the camera moves in, like it would in, in real life type of thing. Because if it was all on one flat image, it would all move at the same time and it wouldn't have that depth and have that realism. So we'll get to that in a minute. So I think got it here. So I'm putting in the actual animation data here, scaling up, placing, and then playing out like that. So, yeah. That is cool. So you can that imagine that. Cool. So you can imagine that from like a, you know, like a the intro to like a motion picture or a short film or something like that. Obviously mm -hmm. the character needs work, but just for the sake of this example, you'd obviously sand down the edges a bit and make the images look a little bit more crisp mm -hmm. for like a better terminology. But that's the kind of thing you can do with this stuff, man. So you can create some amazing images and create some amazing scenes with this stuff. That is so that's cool. incredible. <laughs> wow. I love that yeah. process share too. That's awesome. And the way you explained yeah. depth of field, I did not know. <laughs> that's wow. Wow. Yeah. Just, man, that is really, awesome. Really you makes a difference. A, you need to do a class just on that. Yeah, I, right? I really want to make a short film with this stuff. That's that's the next plan. Amar has inspired me to do that with this whole Batman thing. So I'm definitely Absolutely. got. I definitely need to do go. something. <laughs> well, mine, mine's pretty easy, quick, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's, uh, that's just the, it, it's showing you Kyber and how you can look for different ideas on their home screen on the mm -hmm. on their like on the main page there, mm -hmm. if the gallery. So. That I like Kyber because you can um, create your own, you can generate an image or you can upload your own. So I use one where I have, I upload it. I usually upload mine, but there's a, they do have, they can generate some very nice images. So all you have to do is basically put in what you want to see, your text description, it's going to already have it pre-filled. I want to create a video of, and then you can type in what you want. And with Kyber, you don't have to be very specific at all. It's kind of like mid journey where you can just say balloons or something like that, or just a car and it'll come up with, it, it can read the information from the image and it just comes out with some really interesting, um, it, it really, it plays along with whatever the image is. So you put that in and then you pick the style um, and there's a style, they have some preset styles and this one is just 3D rendering. And it's, this is the final result and it'll show you what the actual prompt is. Instead of just 3D render, it says Octane Render 8K Ray Tracing. You can keep that information if you wanna like know how those particular terms and keywords play out for other images, but that's what it did with this image. Um, so it's just really fast. It uses, I think about eight credits or so, eight or 10 credits per image um, generation, per video generation. You can share it directly online or you can download it and um, download it to your device and it comes down as a um, MP4. So um, awesome. yeah, it, it, it does a really nice job. I love it. Do, can you, you upload any feet. of your own assets to it or, or well, all of they the actually, they, can happen? In there now, I forgot that they, um, no, you, it, the only thing you can, you can upload your image and now you can upload music or sound. 
okay. to it. A short clip, so you can add that to it also. But other cool. than that, it's just one image per um, video. So mm -hmm. I, I like Kyber's really cool uh, for that. And it can give you a pretty dramatic effect quickly. That's awesome. That's cool. And then Genmo is similar to Kyber where you, again, you can have it generate an image or you can upload your own. Um, I don't like that Genmo's generated images as much as Kyber. It's not as crisp and it's a little bit weird, but I've had some interesting ones. But if you don't know what to do, just type in the description if you have no idea what you want to do. So you can type it in and tell a story or just type in a sentence and do that. So with the, you can't um, upload any audio at this point, but once you go past this to the next screen, and that's where you would, um, this is where they have an interesting, um, they have in-painting, video in-painting. So oh, you can cool. animate certain parts of the uh, video or certain parts of your still image. So it, I think it works better. You can see a couple examples on the bottom there. Um, it works better if you have things like water, or clouds, smoke, things like that, where this one, I'm going to animate the waves. So you can see, you could take the little paintbrush there, and then you highlight the areas that you want to animate. And you can um, go ahead and make it a thicker brush stroke if you have more um, to animate, if you more you want to cover. And then you also can undo if you, it's like a little quick erase, you can go back once or it'll, it'll keep going back each time you hit undo. So mm -hmm. you might want to have a more narrow brush for certain sections that you want to animate. So you go ahead and you don't have to put anything in. It autom automatically populates that field for the, uh, what's in the painting. So, or what's in your image. So it's pretty good with that. You don't, but you can also change it if you want. So I haven't tried it yet to see what it looks like if you change it, but this is just kind of showing you how I'm just going through and see like for some of the waves there, I'm just doing a smaller brush because I don't want it to be completely moving. Um, so I'm just kind of doing that and then it's almost done and you can see the finished effect. And it's, again, you can go ahead and download that or share it online. If you mm -hmm. share it, it will, uh, I think it adds a link a URL that will have to be opened up. It won't necessarily show the video. And I think that might be the case also for Kyber too. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then I'm just telling it and you wait, it takes about two minutes for it to um, create a video. And you can also, for both of these, go and start creating another video. This is the finished uh, generation and you can see the waves behind it moving. That's so cool. Like the tip there. So, and it tells you what all the, actual prompt it filled that in I didn't put anything um, I didn't type anything in for that it just read that from it and it has all that information that handy envoy you can you can print it with your little um, artist card basically it'll mm -hmm. make an artist card for you that's kind of cool but um, both of them you'll have a watermark on it it's just a fun thing to do um, I posted one today that with the aurora Bar borealis aurora borealis I can't speak um, and so it was cool. like, I bet this will look good with the way it's moving in the sky. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty effective thing to do. And it's just something to jazz up a steel image. That is it's so just, cool. Yeah. And does Genmo and or Kyber have free and or paid Genmo is free them? completely. And um, oh, cool. they're free. Okay. There is no, I don't believe there is a paid tier. You know what? I don't know. They might have a paid tier where you don't have the watermark. But mm -hmm. um. It, but and it also gives you the caption there too if you want to put the, use that on Instagram or something like that. But um, Kyber, you start out with fifty free credits, I believe. So that's enough to do about five videos, and they're going to have a watermark on it. And then they have uh, after that you subscribe to get more credits. But um, they awesome. are yeah, Genmo is free right now, and they said they intend to remain free. So um, I'm not sure exactly. I haven't used up. I've used quite a few credits, but. I'm still doing pretty good with it. And that's just, if you want to share it, you can share it to all those different sites. That's awesome. That's awesome. Like I'm it. definitely going to be checking that out. Mm -hmm. um, if, if anyone here who's listening has any questions too, that you guys want to ask Heather or Ash, feel free to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also, I'm going to land on this slide here so that you guys can go follow Asher on his Twitter, YouTube, TikTok at Ashman Tunes or check out Heather if you're not following her already. 
um, HB Coop underscore on Twitter, HB Cooper four on Medium, and then your newsletter, Heather, that just launched as well. Yeah. Heather B. Cooper. Wow, dot sound effects. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> well, knows we're going to do a community gallery on there. So yes. I think everybody likes putting in their response, what their results are. So I thought it'd be cool to display, have a place where everybody could just kind of display their work, you know? Oh, that's going to be so cool. I'm, I'm here for it. I know people are loving those tweets that you've been putting out with like a, your prompt and then everyone is hopping on that and, and sharing it, their stuff so cool. again. Everybody, like, More just community. Takes off. And it's yes. like, we're still, I think we're still doing stu- superheroes, which started out as a super cute, whatever. And now we're on every super cute superhero and villain. And <laughs> I love it. And the list so. goes on. People love it. This is why, this is why AI works so well for, you know, community building, but also overall, like this, what you guys just saw here, it's, it's so daunting from the outside looking in if you're not playing around with these tools. But then once you get into it and you have, you know, lower your your expectations and like set your ego aside for five minutes and just click around in some of these things because it will take you down a creative rabbit hole in the best of ways, of mm-hmm. course. But like all and of us, I think we can get lost there. <laughs> Yeah, the avatar was an AI gen it, for my selfies, and I was kind of like, love it. "Oh, I didn't think I would like that," but like, yeah, I don't. Oh, it's. I need to make one, man. What was the yeah, prompt I mean, you used to get yours? I didn't. Well? I did it through Lensa, and you upload um, like. Oh, okay. Lensa is that big one that everyone yeah. went crazy. Yeah, the one that went viral. I, yeah. But it was like around Christmas time, and I think um, in the holidays it had. It was. I think I got a two hundred um, images for like seven dollars. And you keep them all. And I have Mm -hmm. some of them are ridiculous. And I don't even know who it is or what it's supposed to be. But it's wild. It even like adjusted my different hairstyles and things Mm -hmm. like that. But it's pretty crazy. how it does. Why not? You know, exactly. Yeah. One thing I will say about this, um, the the, um, the AI stuff, the fact that there is like a lot of tools now, like loads and there are tens of millions of tools being made right now as we speak, like mm-hmm. definitely go and explore those tools, but don't become, don't just keep going down the rabbit hole, like choose yeah. a few tools that you like and, you know, create something because I think it, it, it was Jane, Jane Kim Yu that was in our community that said the other week about the fact that she kind of felt that she was kind of paralyzed by seeing all these tools. Yes. And there are those tools right now, but like, just, just choose a few. There's nothing wrong with looking there. There's nothing wrong with looking over there, but like, just choose a few that you like and then work with them. If you like what you've got, stick with that or then just like go and explore somewhere, but just make a start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Don't just keep mm-hmm. checking, checking, checking. Yes. So one of the tools up. Okay. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Heather, I was just going to say one of the, uh, one of the things that always gets me is if I go into one of these, because I'm guilty of this too, I'll see a tool and I'm like, oh, I want to explore it. But if I don't have any reasoning really or a project that I'm working on to help it um, or to help me, you know, guide some content or output out of the tool, I will just spend hours clicking around and like just, you know, going, like you said, Asher, going down this rabbit hole where I like Mm. hours of productivity to it because I'm just so like, fascinated and clicking on all the bells and whistles but like my my biggest piece of advice that I tell people who are getting into AI for the first time is like put something together around it like have a project in mind have a a goal or objective of what you want to create with it and then use those tools to enable that process because if you go into it blind just not really knowing like what you want to get out of it you will you will spend a lot of time and just like amazement don't get me wrong it's a really cool experience Um, but but it's easy to get lost in the sauce with these tools you know what too though like the reason i was i do tools is because i did the same thing i was in everything and i just decided let me share what i learned you know what i Mm -hmm. what kind of result and that ended up working out because that's my niche but um, I do go back to the same um, tools over and over. You'll mm-hmm. see me always, you know, kind of focusing on several. But when you're working, when you if you do find something, one thing, don't be paralyzed and think that you can't post your content because it's not all the way like you're not going to have a complete movie or you're not going to have a complete video. And your, even your images are not going to be exactly how you want it to be. But you st- there's still value in sharing that. So share those mm-hmm. things and then you'll get more feedback from the community 
don't think that everybody's learning this stuff and there's so many things out there you can't really put enough out so share your journey and you have content you don't have to like hold off on it and just keep creating and keep and as you go you just keep building on that it's amazing Absolutely. how many people are afraid of that though like the of being judged or whatever but like everyone's everyone's in the same position man like none right. of us are experts in this stuff everyone's yeah. literally winging it everyone's learning it you know we just kind of learn from each other and pull each other up you know so just exactly. like you said document your journey share your process you never know who who could be looking at your content what that you're sharing that's unfinished and still under construction that's in the same mm -hmm. position as you and you inspire them and it's like you let them know it's okay to share their journey and so forth mm -hmm. and so forth so you and never know what you like. these the people that are creating these tools they want your feedback and that's how i started with kyber and they they they're continually making it better and the mm -hmm. more you put out there they and they'll jump into the comments don't be afraid to i i always tag them because they're very they watch that stuff and they are in constantly improving so please just, you know, go on out there and see, and, you know, they love, it's, it's huge, you know, user generated content for them. And it also helps them create more and more. Um, and it love gets it. better and better and refine it. So just, it helps everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Synth Wise words. Yeah. Synthesia was the first, um, the first uh, company or brand or whatever that actually interacted with my post and actually liked it and retweeted it or whatever no, not retweeted it because it was on um, instagram they liked it and then liked the story that i put it in and stuff like that that's the first kind of endorsement if you like i've had from <laughs> but companies. you know it's funny Kyber, they didn't know that i was one of the first people that posted something for them leonardo too i think um midas said that i was the first person who wrote about leonardo and it was just kind of like it was so cool and um, they really need that exposure. And once people start seeing it, then it's like, oh, I didn't know I could do that with it. And then I just kept telling other people, try it, try it and put your poster mm. stuff. And they are so grateful for that. And that's how they're able to add these other features in there and in, in their Discord yeah. communities too. Yeah. It's just- Free promotion, it's right? Free promotion. Absolutely. Yeah. This is if this isn't the like biggest indicator of like how how tools like this and how this world of AI can enable community because everybody has an open feedback loop right now. We're in a space mm -hmm. where this this these types of tools and these activities are growing rapidly. So nobody really has it fully figured out, but everyone is willing to share their knowledge um, along the way. And even the product builders that are out there doing it mm -hmm. are doing a great job of connecting with the communities. Um, so, you know, if you're new to this and you're just starting out um, or you want to just like take it to the next level, it's definitely worth like talking to or, or linking up with some of those people who are yes. who are creating these tools, because at the same level, they are very grassroots roots and willing to help out as it grows and gets to that next level. So yes. um, thank you so much, Asher and Heather, for being here today and sharing all of this knowledge. I feel like we could have gone on this uh, yeah. talk track for hours because there's so much to unpack. I can but... talk for three more hours. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, you don't get tired, right? It's the session that never ended. Um, yeah. Well, the but, viewers uh, learned something and I yes. appreciate it. Yes, thank you guys so much. Definitely drop Ash and Heather follows and go check out what they're doing because it's amazing stuff and you will learn so much. Um, and don't forget, we're going to be around. We're going to be on Twitter Spaces tomorrow. If you're listening to the replay of this, you can find us on Twitter Spaces Thursday. If you missed that, you can always listen to it, uh, the replay of that on Twitter Spaces. And then same, same with Friday. We're going to be talking AI, even a little bit more advanced stuff with Heather on your Twitter Space on Friday. Ash, I think you'll also also be there. So it's going to be a fun time. Um, and as always, if you have questions about this kind of stuff, you can reach out to all of us in Discord. Heather's there. Asher's there. I'm there. You can even create uh, images in Discord. We've got a mid-journey channel as well. So you can create your own art and test it out. And then every few weeks, we've been hosting kind of a different challenge around AI art. So it's the perfect way to like dip your toes in. If you haven't done it yet, you can join the challenge theme to be announced this week. And um, it's going to be great. So I will go ahead and end this. But thank you so much, Heather. Thank you so much, Ash. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's been emotional. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.